gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, that makes life seem worthwhile, dwells in your arms, and the spell of your smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream, to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. In answer to many of your requests, here's Dennis singing his RCA Victor recording of Yeah, Sure, You Betcha. Hilda, oh Hilda, I van drink your brand. Will you, oh will you, let me hold your hand? If I should ask you, do you love me too? Say, Yeah, Sure, You Betcha, I van tank I do. In Wisconsin, Holy Johnson, Fell in love with a sweet Swedish Miss Hilda Swanson He wooed her, he pursued her All Wisconsin heard Johnson sing Swanson the song Oh Hilda, oh Hilda, I van Tinker Grand Will ya, oh will ya, let me hold your hand If I should ask you, do you love me too? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, hey Ben Tinker do Oh I do, yes I do by golly, by yiminy, I do. If I should ask you, do you love me too? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha, I been think I do. Yahoo! Yahoo! Oh, Hilda, oh, Hilda, let this Swedish boy thrill you until you are yumping with joy. There at the preacher, when he says, will you? Say, yeah, sure, you betcha. Ben Tinke do, oh I do, yes I do, by golly, by yiminy I do, there at the preacher when he says will you, say yasher, sure, you betcha, hey Ben Tinke do, by golly, by yiminy I Ben Tinke I do. A very special tip on hair appeal, girls, from famous beauty authority, Kay Dumit. Lovely hair, shining with natural highlights and shadows, sparkling with silken softness, inviting with clean fragrance. That's the natural hair appeal that men prefer. And now such natural hair appeal can be yours with one touch of magic, Luster Cream Shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo is an amazing new dainty cream that whips up like magic in hard or soft water into a mild, gentle lather that sweeps dullness away. Out of her wealth of cosmetic lore, Kay Dumit blended gentle lanolin with special secret ingredients to achieve this delightful new cream that leaves your hair so easy to manage, so soft and shining with the natural appeal that men love. Ask for the economical dollar jar of Luster Cream Shampoo at your cosmetic counter. Also 30 cent and 55 cent sizes. Discover the secret that women and girls of all ages are learning everywhere. There's a world of glamour in each dainty jar of luster cream. The cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. Well, there's quite a stir at the Anderson boarding house in Weaverville this morning. We find our young hero, Dennis Day, in the dining room, helping to open several packages which have just arrived. For strangely and excitingly enough, they are addressed to the more fragile half of the Anderson family. Gee, Mr. Anderson, that's for you? Yes, my dear little poopsie girl picked it out for me herself. You like it, Dennis? Oh, yes, sir. It's one of the prettiest aprons I've ever seen. Uh... I think so, too. Uh, notice how that blue ribbon just matches my eyes. Oh, yes, sir. Shall we open the other packages now? No, no need to. It's just the rest of my fall outfit. Mops, scrubbing brushes, and dust caps. <laughs> Gee, it sure is nice of Mrs. Anderson to let you have a whole new wardrobe. Yes, well, you see, uh, Poopsie won't be spending much time around the house during the day anymore. So she's taking me off of part-time and putting me on full-time. 
Well, gosh, congratulations, Mr. Anderson. You sure have earned it. But why won't Mrs. Anderson be here during the day anymore? What, didn't you know? She's going into business. She has an appointment with Homer Willoughby this morning. Your wife is going into business with my boss? Holy smoke, another axis, defer and il duchi. <laughs> Poopsie isn't going into business with him, Dennis. Oh, well, gee, she isn't trying to get a job at the store, is she? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's good, because our policy is the customer is always right, and if she was a clerk, who dare? <laughs> Your customers are perfectly safe, Dennis. Uh, Poopsie's going into business for herself. For herself? Then what's Mr. Willoughby... Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Anderson. Good morning, cuddle baby. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, your husband was just telling me about you going into business and that my boss was involved in some way. That's right. Haven't you heard about Mr. Willoughby taking over a dress shop? Why, no, ma'am. I didn't know he had any, any interest in dresses at all. At least not vacant ones. <laughs> Well, he has. He was forced to foreclose a mortgage and take over the shop, and I'm going to buy it from him. That is, if Mr. Gordon of that Fifi dress shop chain doesn't put in a higher bid. Well, that's what this morning's meeting is for, to decide which one of us Mr. Willoughby will sell it to. Gosh, I sure hope you get it, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, so do I. They have such stunning things. This man-tailored suit I'm wearing is one of their creations. <laughs> Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, yes, ma'am. It makes you look very virile. <laughs> what? Well, what I mean is It brings out your real personality It does, eh? Yes, ma'am, of course it hides you But it brings out your... <laughs> uh, could I have a moment to clarify my thinking on this? Never mind Come along if you want to drive down to Willoughby's with me I don't want to be late Yes, ma'am And thank you for dropping the subject instead of me <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, are you sure you want to go into this business? Of course. But isn't a woman's place in the home? Herbert will do there very nicely. Yeah, I guess so. Would you like me to talk to Mr. Willoughby, use my influence on him? Dennis, will you stop thinking up ways to get me out of this deal? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to make this shop a big success. I might even get Mrs. Hannah Cabot II to wear one of my gowns. And wouldn't that be something? Boy, I'll say. Who's she? <laughs> Just one of the ten best-dressed women in America, that's all. And she's here in town right now to be the guest of honor at the country club dance. Oh. And, of course, it's very important to the success of a gown to be seen on just the right person. Yes, ma'am. Is that why you bought a suit? <laughs> what? I spoke without think thinking it out far enough. Well, be more careful in the future. Oh, this is the street, isn't it? Yes, and I believe there's a parking space right in front of Willoughby's store. It's kind of narrow. Dennis, I know how to park. Well, I... Wait, Mrs. Anderson, you shouldn't drive in front with you got a back in. Perhaps I should take the wheel. Please, I know... <laughs> <laughs> now look what you've done. Me? Yes, talking to me while I was parking. Your big mouth was open wider than the space I was trying to get in. <laughs> His fender's dented, isn't it? I don't know. I can't see it. <laughs> Why not? It's on the roof of our car. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look, here comes a policeman. A policeman? Dennis, you were right. You may take the wheel. Huh? You heard me. Slide over and I'll sit where you are and hurry. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, now. Faith, and let's see the drooper who's to blame for this. What? How dare you, officer? Can't you see how that other car is parked? Or are you too dim-witted? No, don't be after handing me that, lady. Trying to put the blame on some poor, innocent driver who wasn't even in his car. I saw this car smash into it with my own eyes. Now, see here. Now, I... now, Colleen, me darling, what this fine broth of a lad saw, he saw. And devil a bit will get him to change his mind a child at all, McCushel, a storm of wood. <laughs> Well, now, do you know, it's just possible that me eyes have deceived me. <laughs> What's your name, lad? Dennis O'Day, your worship, and may it please your honor. 
Tinnis O'Day. That wouldn't perchance be Irish, would it now, lad? Sure, and it wouldn't be Czechoslovakian, your grace. <laughs> not from the north of Ireland, I hope. Faith, and not a bit of it, you all. <laughs> ah, that's fine now. Well, it's easy to see what happened here. You were driving along, minding your own business, when all of a sudden, this parked car smashed into you. <laughs> and without a word of warning, too. Will you look at the way he's parked, and not two blocks from a fire hydrant? <laughs> sure, and he's a menace to safe drivers. And dead, and that's just what he is. Look at his car. Not even a taillight on it. And you, on the other hand, even have an extra one on your front fender. <laughs> Oh, that I have. I'm a cautious darling, I am, I am. <laughs> oh, he is a darling, isn't he, officer? We all love him so. I don't blame you for that, ma'am. And when I see the rascal who owns his other car, it's a ticket I'll be handing him straight off. Good lad. He's a threat to human lives. He ought to be locked up. He's a... a... Ooh, what I see coming. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey, what happened to my car? Well, Mr. Willoughby... So you're the owner of this car, eh? Well, there's a nice ticket waiting for you, my man. What? Dennis, my dress shop. You can't let this happen. No. You see, officer, there's been a mistake. The accident was all my fault, honest. Besides, I'm a Lithuanian. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, come now, my lad. It's nice of you to take the blame. But look at this fella's car. Parked three feet out from the curb. But Mr. Willoughby didn't mean to do it. He'd probably been drinking again, didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> drinking? Now, see here. Don't you know it's against the law to drive a car while drunk? Sure, but you can't hold Mr. Willoughby for that. That law was passed long after his license expired. <laughs> huh? Why, this boy is crazy, officer. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, eh? Well, drunk driving and no license is good enough for me. Come on, Willoughby. You're telling it to a judge. No, wait. Yes, wait. Yeah, for heaven's sake, wait. Come on, Willoughby, start moving. And many thanks to you, lad. The top of the morning, do you? The top of the morning? Oh, I just fell to the bottom. <laughs> oh, no, Dan. Yeah, it was just awful, Mildred. That's why I phoned you to come right down to the store. I'm almost positive I lost popularity with your mother. Say, wait a minute. Mr. Willoughby being in jail is the answer to our whole problem. Huh? Say it again. I may have missed a key word somewhere. <laughs> Look, who's mother's rival for this shop? Mr. Gordon, the out-of-towner who owns that big dress chain. This is your chance to get rid of him and leave the field clear for Mother. Get rid of him? Sure, scare him off some way. He's due here for the meeting at... Oh, my gosh, look. That must be Mr. Gordon crossing the street right now. Oh, yeah, quick, get out of sight. I'll think of something. Okay. How do you do, sir? Hello, Mr. Willoughby in. I'm Mademoiselle Fifi. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, miss. I thought you were Mr. Gordon. I am Mr. Gordon. Mademoiselle Fifi is just a name I use, a trade name. Oh, gee, you sure got the worst of the trade, huh? <laughs> Look, I'm a busy man. Is Mr. Willoughby in or isn't he in? Yes, sir, he's in, and that's why he's not here. He won't be in till he's out. <laughs> what is this gibberish? I have an appointment to see Mr. Willoughby about buying that dress shop of his. Gee, you're going to invest money here in Weaverville? I am. Boy, what a devil-may-care attitude. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've always heard that Weaverville is an up-and-coming town. Well, it used to be up-and-coming, but all of a sudden it got down and went. <laughs> I know, I live here. You mean there's no business in town at all? Last week this store didn't do five cents worth. Then this week it fell off a little. <laughs> but why can't you stimulate business? Did you ever try a one-cent sale? Oh, lots of them. Never sold a single penny. <laughs> Why, this is fantastic. Yeah. But how does Mr. Willoughby manage to run two stores and keep up a beautiful home? Well, of course, if a fellow doesn't care how he gets his money... What do you mean? I'd rather not say, unless you press me. But I do press you. Attaboy. <laughs> you mean...
mean to tell me Willoughby makes his money by underhanded methods? Well... Because if he does, I'll withdraw my offer for his dress shop immediately. You mean that? I do. Lean forward, pal, and put your ear in my mouth. (laughs) Well, go on. What would you say about a man who swindled $100,000 out of widows and orphans? What? You mean Willoughby... No, I didn't say he did. I just asked you what you think of it. I think it's horrible. And I'm going to talk to Willoughby about it, too. Where is he? They took him to jail this morning. Jail? What for? Haven't you been paying attention? Huh? Oh. (laughs) They caught up with his swindling operations. That's better. For a minute, you had me worried. What will they do with him? Willoughby? Oh, with his connections, he'll get off. He will? Sure. They can't make a rap stick against him. Why, it wouldn't surprise me if any minute... Well, speak of the devil. So, there you are. Oh, why, Mr. Gordon. Thank heavens I got back in time to see you. Willoughby, is it true they took you to jail this morning? Why, yes. But how did you know? Never mind. And you beat the rap, eh? Oh, sure. It was just a minor offense. (laughs) A minor offense? You call that a minor offense? Well, of course. Well, I'll bet you've done worse than that yourself many times. (laughs) Oh, I have, have I? Willoughby, I'm withdrawing my bid for your shop. I want nothing more to do with you. Good day, sir. But, Mr. Gordon... Dennis Day. Gee, I'm beginning to hate that name. (laughs) Somehow I've got a sneaking suspicion that you had something to do with this. Me, sir? Yes, you, sir. First you have me clapped into jail on a ridiculous traffic charge. And now I return to find this. Do you think there's no limit to my patience? I don't know, but that's the way I'm praying. (laughs) Very well. I'm going to teach you and that Mrs. Anderson a lesson. I hereby accept her bid for my dress shop. Accept it? Oh, Mr. Willoughby! Dennis, stop that silly kissing. I just had these shoes shine. (laughs) But, Mr. Willoughby, I'm so grateful. Oh, you are, huh? Grateful, huh? Ha, ha, ha! Mr. Willoughby, that isn't a good wholesome chuckle. No, it might interest you to know that your Mrs. Anderson is stuck with a whole store full of brand new, latest style, long length dresses. That's bad? In Weaverville, it's murder. Why, there isn't a woman in town who'd touch one of those dresses on a bet. That's why the last owner went broke. Oh my gosh, I'm having a normal day again. Uh, I didn't want to sell to anybody in town. I was content to stick that chain store man. But now, well, just tell Mrs. Anderson. Happy bankruptcy. But, Mr. Willoughby... Tut, my boy. Those are my final words. Yeah, and when I repeat them to Mrs. Anderson, I guess they'll be mine, too. (laughs) Oh, Dennis, you can't mean it. A whole store full of long dresses? Every last one of them, Mildred. Oh, my gosh. Well, what did Mother say when you told her? She looked at me like she was seeing a ghost. I think it gave her an idea, too. <laughs> Golly, long dresses wouldn't be so bad if the women here were... Dennis, I think I have it. Gee, it's marvelous. Every time we're in a little trouble, you come up with an idea that leads to suicide. <laughs> but this is foolproof, Dennis. Listen, have you ever heard of Mrs. Hannah Cabot II? Oh, yeah, your mother mentioned her. Do you know what would happen to mother's business overnight if one of the ten best-dressed women in America wore an Anderson gown to that country club dance? Why would a woman like that wear a dress from a small-town shop? Because a famous Parisian style authority is going to tell her they're the finest gowns ever designed. Do you know who? Who? You. Who? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you can do it, Dennis. You do a marvelous French impersonation. And you can take one of the dresses along with you. Mother's got several of them here. But Mildred... Oh, Mother, Dennis and I have the most marvelous idea. Mildred, stop using vile language. Vile language? You said Dennis. (laughs) (laughs) But, Mother, this idea... I don't care to hear it. Your father and I are going to the shop and get busy protecting our investment. Come along, Herbert. Lead the way, flame of desire. (laughs) Dennis, you have... 
have to get to work on Mrs. Cabot this very minute. Oh, Mildred, these things always lead to such grief. Isn't there some other way? Dennis, for heaven's sakes, don't tell me you're afraid to call on her. All right, I won't. But believe me, I'm not shaking from courage. <laughs> Bon voyage, monsieur. <laughs> bon what? You speak French? Why, well, yes, of course. How do you do? <laughs> well, how do you do? Permit me, I should introduce myself. I am Vladimir Dekovich, greatest dress designer in all Moscow, which is a city in Russia and explains my accent. Oh, I see. Well, of course, Russia has had some of the best dress women of all time. Catherine the Great, the Grand Duchess Tatiana Romanova. Oh, da! And I designed all their clothes. <laughs> what? But they've been dead for hundreds of years. I did not say they look well in them, madame. <laughs> You're an awfully odd little man, aren't you? Just what is it you want of me? Madame, I have here the most beautiful gown ever designed. It is from a little dress shop right here in town. I want you should wear it from the country club dance. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I've already chosen my gown from sex. Oh, madame, my gown is more beautiful than any sack you have ever seen. <laughs> my dear friend. I was referring to Saks Fifth Avenue. But the sack is a sack no matter what street you pick it up. <laughs> Are you quite sure you're a Russian-style authority, young man? Oh, Ninochka, madame. Oh, you never saw Russia in your life, and you know it. <laughs> Silly girl. <laughs> now, you stop this nonsense right here and now. Come, come, man. What is your game? Well, I guess I might as well tell you the truth. I'm not Russian at all. No! <laughs> da, I mean we. I mean, well, I had to try this, Mrs. Cabot. I was desperate. Oh? Yes, ma'am. It's my girlfriend's mother. She's got a terrible problem. I quite agree. <laughs> no, you see, she was tricked into buying a dress shop, and if it isn't a success, she'll lose all her money. So, so you thought if I wore one of her creations, other women would follow my lead? Yes, ma'am. You're one of the ten women in America who are dressed or something. <laughs> Won't you do it, Mrs. Cabot? I need you badly. Well, I was a Girl Scout once, darn it. Mrs. Cabot, then you will? Uh, these uh, dresses of yours, uh, short skirts, I suppose. Oh, no, ma'am, long. The very latest. Well, I'm surprised. And uh, what about necklines? Oh, they have them, too. Yes, no doubt. I mean, are they high or low? Oh, all kinds. You've got your choice from turtleneck to you'll be in Life magazine, but you could also be arrested. <laughs> you know, uh, you're quite refreshing in a jarring sort of way. <laughs> Thank you. But will you really wear my gown, Mrs. Cabot? Oh. Very well, young man. Leave it here and I'll wear it to the dance. What's more, I shall even phone the newspapers and tell them I'm doing so. Oh, Mrs. Cabot, I just don't know what to say. Gee, I hope the alarm doesn't go off. This is the pleasantest dream I ever had. Golly, I wish Mother would hurry, Dennis. The newspaper just came out and I've already had seven calls for fittings. Oh, Dennis, you're just marvelous. Ah, oh, shucks. What if I am? Gee whiz. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. When Mother hears about this, she'll just scream with joy. Mother, at last. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. You may kiss me if you like. <laughs> kiss you? Yes, ma'am. On the hand or on the face. Wherever you find me, the more desirable. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mother, haven't you heard? Dennis got Mrs. Cabot to wear one of your long dresses to the dance tomorrow night. <gasps> you fool This is a scream of joy <laughs> Mother, don't you understand? Every woman in town will want one of your long dresses It's you who don't understand 
Herbert and I have just spent the entire night cutting seven inches off every dress in our shop. <laughs> oh, no, Mother. Yes. Boy, I sure hope there's nothing to this theory of reincarnation. I'd hate to have to go through a life like this again. <laughs> Dennis Day will be back in just a moment with a song. But first, here's a fact worth knowing. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And that's important, as our Colgate players demonstrate. Seen a hotel switchboard where two pretty telephone operators are talking. What a nerve he has, thinking I'd go out on a date with a guy like him. You mean that good-looking blonde boy? Gee, Mabel, he looked all right to me. I got no complaints on the fella's looks. But I'm telling you, Gertrude... Imagine. Gee, you'd think one of his pals would tip him off to see his dentist, wouldn't you? Well, one of his pals finally did, and here's what that fellow found out. Scientific tests prove that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And Colgate's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth, cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath. While it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpaste prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So, to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. With Charles Dand in the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing the number one ballad of the day, I Wish I Didn't Love You So. I wish I didn't love you so My love for you Should have faded long ago Remember, doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. And this beauty plan with palm olive soap was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan improves all types of skin. Brings fresher, brighter, younger looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. 